Hello SS2 students, welcome to the today's class. Remember this is your third term scheme of work. Today we'll be looking at General JTU Aguironse is regime, his military regime, which was uh, July, January to July 1966. Now, uh, this one you are seeing is the picture of General JTU Agui Rossi. Now, let's look at the factors responsible for the military coup of 15 July 1966. Number one is regionalization of political parties. Political parties in Nigeria were region based. Whereby you see AG, you see AG which is from the west, you see NCNC which is from the east, you see NPC which is from the north. So those political parties does not portray the unity of Nigeria. Number two is intra-party rivalry. Yes, there has been conflict and problems within inter-party, just like the AG. Um, Above me, Awolowo had problem with SL Akintola in the same party, and we have you. They they had um, AG crisis. That is Western Region crisis, party crisis everywhere. So because of those crises, the military has to come into power. Then another one was, which is number three, is Celsius crisis of 1962 and 1963. Celsius was held and it was mild with crisis all over. So that helped in bringing military rule in Nigeria. In bringing the 15 January 1966 coup d'etat. Then the fourth one was the 1964 federal election, which was marred with um, crisis as well. Then the fifth one was corrupt politicians. Yes, yeah, so many politicians in those days we are so corrupt and they were wasting money and the military we are there looking at them. So they had to come in to rescue the Nigerian economy. The number six was the, the 1965 Western Nigeria election crisis. We have discussed this one, the 1965 Western Nigeria election crisis, which was marred by so many crises. Okay, the seventh one was politicization of the army. The army now coming to politics and for you to get to one position or the other. You must play a kind of rugged politics for you to get there. So they cannot bear it anymore. So the last one was the influence of other cubes. As I have discussed before, Togo had their, uh, their cube, which was the first West African country that had their, their cube. Then Egypt was the first Niger um, African country to have, to have cube. So from all that experience, so Nigerian military men now learn how to conduct cube. Okay, let's go further to look at the structure of government under General Agui Yirosi. Because after the the cube of after the cube, General Agui Yirosi came up as the head of state so let's look at the structure of government under general agui Ironsi. okay in his capacity as the head of state general Ironsi suspended the constitution and dismissed the executive and legislative arms of the federal and state government he appointed military governors as sole administrators for the four regions. They were assisted by permanent secretaries 
he with the governors constituted the Supreme Military Council SMC SMC which means the Supreme Military Council with power to formulate policies for the whole country he also had the Federal Executive Council comprising civilians to assist him in the execution of policies. General Hiroshi appointed a Constitution Review Com Commission under Shivrotimi Williams and the Commission for the Review of the Unification of the Federal and the Regional Civil Service, headed by Francis Moke Ede. So that is how he formed his own government. Alright, so this is where we come to the end of 15th January 1960, which is Agui um regime. Thank you very much. Now, let's, next class, we'll look at another military regime. Thank you. See you in our next class.